Welcome to the conversation on NTA. My name is Rita Ewujo. One thing is certain in Nigeria right now, the fact that we have a big challenge of unemployment. But do you know that even with this challenge, most people who actually want to employ people find it difficult to identify employable people? Very correct. We will be talking about employability on the show today. That's a conversation you want to be a part of, right? But of course, if it's a conversation, I can't be alone. I know you're there, but I still have others in the studio. Let's meet them. Who is sitting by my right this morning? I thought you were going to go for Liz. No, 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 no. Let's just Liz, go this way. I know ladies me. first, but... Um... Liz, Liz, stop admiring me, please. Hello. My name is Chukuma. <laughs> I'm a business coach. <laughs> okay. Okay, you already heard it. He just said my name. Liz, just Liz. Just Liz, thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> and to my extreme thank right. You. My name is Dr. Dan Ochi. I am a business development specialist and uh, HR consultant. That makes you the learned man on set today. Thank you. <laughs> because you when you, we're, we're talking about HR and employability. Yes. Yes. Um, when it comes to getting jobs, I mean, the, the, the statistics are staggering when you look at the rate of unemployment that we have in Nigeria. But people would tell you, I mean, those who employ will tell you it's a big challenge actually getting people who can do the job when they are looking for people to employ. It's wanting for you to apply for a job and then you get that job. Can you keep the job because you deserve to keep it? I'm, I'm using that phrase very strategically. Can you keep it because you deserve to keep it? Can you change your job at all because you can? These are the things that will actually determine whether you are really employable or not. Have you ever wondered why some men cannot finish using the towel and just hang it back somewhere in the bathroom? <laughs> why would they have to throw it on the bed? Little things like that, they put up. Have you ever wondered why a grown man with a wife and kids will go to the toilet, the lavatory, to ease himself to do number one, to pee, right? He takes his seat up flips out that thing. The moment he starts peeing, he flushes the toilet. Right? Mm -hmm. the, toilet the toilet does its own bit. The flushing is done before the pee is done. And oh. so 10 liters of water is wasted. The pee is still there. Oh my goodness. He doesn't put the seat back down. He doesn't reflush. He doesn't wash his hands. He walks away. Ooh. That's why I don't like shaking men, by the way. Mm. There's, there's a particular thing we know many men to be very, very guilty of, and that's throwing their shoes and stockings all over. Um, maybe men are going to be better, not throwing it around, but they can just, there's just something that have those smelly feet and keep it for you in the living room. Women don't like it. I have had the privilege beyond you know the expert we have. I've had the privilege of interviewing people, being on panels, maybe even employing people. Let's talk. What has been your experience in this area? I'm going to start with you again, Chikoma. I see, I see. <laughs> what I should be doing now is that I'll be looking this way so that you don't. That will get me. my attention more, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a talk recently with someone, and it's about people who work. Mm -hmm. I told the person that. I have learned over time that when you want to employ, I don't take what people tell me on the CV mm. or on the interview panel as getting ready for the work. I go outside of what you have said on your CV. I try to know, I basically do when I'm on a panel of interview, I only do the emotional and the psychological. Because I believe that everyone that comes on the interview panel will always answer you yes. They will answer to the affirmative that everything you are asking them, can you do this, they can, can you do, do this, it. can you do this? Because they wouldn't be there if they have not come to tell they can do it. So I leave that and I go to the other side. But I always tell them that you'll be able to retain this job after two months. Not because of what you've told me. Because you've made yourself available that you can do this job in two months. I'll be able to know if you have worked your talk. And in some cases, 
my predictions usually come up. That some people come there, they always want who will be dashing them money. Definitely. And they will be coming to while away time mm. without doing anything. And before you know it, you see the bad eggs. It wouldn't be long. You see them manifesting themselves. So on a, in a real situation, most people who come for interviews these days actually come to look for a place where they will while away time and get compensated for wiring away time. While away time, social media is not helping. We'll that's, get to, we'll that's get, my, that's we'll, my opinion. We'll get to the social media <laughs> and release. You know, um, what you, when, when he was talking, he got, I got myself, you know, going through a lot of things that's happened to me in the course of doing my job. Um, every now and then, we are, you know, open to training younger people. Now, IT's core members, they come in. Most of them come in, they study English. They study mass communication, they study performing arts. And um, I always try to ask you questions, like you said, that is not what you're studying. Mm. You come into my office, your name is Elizabeth. And then I ask you, what are you studying? You said English. I said, what's your name? I always hear stuff like Elizabeth or Elizabeth. Gloria, not you know? Gloria. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, you studied English. You're a core member, you say yes. What's your surname? You tell me your surname is uh, probably Abai. Elizabeth Abai. And I ask you, where are you from? You tell me where you're from. And I ask you again, what is the meaning of your name, the surname? And you say, mm, I, I really can't remember. My parents just gave it to me. Even when your name is native, and I ask you, say, I really can't tell. My parents just gave it to me. Uh, your name, number one, you couldn't pronounce it, means that you cannot defend your certificates. Try. I was taught that oh the, my first goodness. Thing, Try. the first thing you should do when you're learning something, mm -hmm. if you're learning to be a tailor, mm -hmm. you always want to do a pattern with your body. Mm -hmm. So if I'm learning English, uh, pronunciation is part of it. So I must start pronouncing things around me, and the first of them is my name. Mm -hmm. So if you can't call your name correctly, you're not, uh, you, you haven't, you don't, def you don't deserve that certificate of English. Die. That's one. Mm. Then if you do not, uh, university is not um, in Igbo language, we call university Mahadum, mm. where you go to acquire all knowledge. Learn all. Learn everything. So university, you come out and you're not, cu your curiosity is not aroused. In year one, we're taught things like philosophy and logic logical thinking, logical reasoning, you begin to question things. Is when your curiosity is aroused that you, you know, open up for knowledge. You want mm. to know, you want to fill up. Mm. So if you are carrying a name you've carried for 20 years and you don't know the meaning, and your curiosity never made you ask your parents, what does this mean? That means you're, you're not an asset for me. I can't yeah. employ that, you. That person's condition is very critical. So <laughs> what it simply tells me is if, I, if you come into my office to work, Mm -hmm. And you see these things like this. It's going to be like this till Jesus comes again, <laughs> whenever that be. So no, there's no. no creativity in you. There's no uh, a curiosity for you to do something differently. So on that basis, uh, you're already dead and gone. Well, if you had plans to come and do your <laughs> IT or NYSE with Lizzie, he just got an expo. Get to work. Let's, let's move on to our specialist on set today. Um, unemployability or employability, you know, it's a big challenge. You are someone who specializes in this area. HR, what, what, what does it mean to say someone is not employable or, you know, someone is employable and can Thank sustain you. an employment? Thank you, Rita. Um, yeah, before that, let me quickly agree with you that one of the greatest challenges we have in this country is unemployment. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest problems. Unless there is an emergency, mm. the clear state of emergency on unemployment issue will continue to have problems in this country. Mm. No thanks to our academic uh, curriculum in the university. Mm -mm. No thanks to the non-system uh, 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 to check the rate of population growth. Mm -hmm. No thanks to the rate of um, the development, the infrastructure development because we're not matching with the rate of um, the, the population. Mm. So unemployment is one of the greatest problems in this country. And we all know that. There are a lot of people there who are looking for jobs. But like we rightly say, Rita, when you advertise for a job, 
Maybe you just need two. You get about 2,000 applications. You get about 1,000 applications. You sit down as an HR person, shortlist these applicants, and probably invite them for interview. That's when you know that not all that are glitters are gold. That's when you know that not all these people that say they are unemployed, they are looking for jobs, actually fit to do the job. Hmm. In human resource management, we have two types of skills. We have a hard skill, the hard skill, and then we have the soft skill. Okay. You need the hard skill. That's what our educational system prepares you to. You need the hard skill to be able to get the job. What is hard skill? Hard skills are measurable and teachable skills you can get. Okay. Like an engineer, like uh, somebody who studied, uh, who can do baking, who can prepare, uh, um, uh, um, fashion designer, who can design clothes. These are hard skills. But when you get this job, you need a soft skill. You need to develop soft skill that you need to hold this job in workplace, work ami uh, amicably with your co-workers, retain the job, and be able to grow in the job. Mm. So it's unfortunate that, I don't know, our educational system, throughout my university system, even as a part-time lecturer, I have never been told, I don't think there's anywhere people are taught these skills. You just have to learn them on your own. <laughs> so what don't do know, I don't know also if there's anywhere people are taught in the university how to search for a job or the skills you need to search for a job. Now, as a HR person, when we are looking for employment, when, when, when we are recruiting people, there are certain things we are looking at, hmm. three basic skills we are looking at. Okay. And when candidates, when applicants don't have this, less than 2% of the applicants normally have this skill. One of them is your problem-solving skill. Hmm. Let me tell you. As an employer, you have problems. That's why you're looking for people to employ. Mm -hmm. You can't do the job. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the problem-solving skill, I'm not going to recruit you. Just two months ago, in my organization, we advertised for a farm manager. Because okay. we are going to into commercial agriculture. We advertise for a farm manager. And I happened to be one of the panelists. I got somebody who's an expert in agriculture, and somebody graduated with a first degree in, in, in um, agricultural engineering. I don't okay. want to mention the school. <laughs> agricultural engineering. And I said, I don't know what prompted me to ask. Do you, can, have you, can you describe a tractor? The person have not seen a tractor Bro, before. Never oh, seen my tractor goodness. Before. Bro, never seen yes, tractors. you won't so believe it, my sister. Bro, Bro, I have the CV in my office. Agriculture engineering, engineering has not Bro, seen a tractor. tractor. How many tires are tractors? How is it do? What are the components of a tractor? What are the main functions of a tractor? And this is somebody who is going to manage the tractor drivers. He has not seen it. And he graduated with a first B engine. In, so it baffles me the kind of um, hmm. in that kind of thing, that person who you can't say that if an unemployed, unemployed is not employed, there's no job in the country. There are jobs, but there are no people with appropriate skills hmm. and qualification and experience to man this job. That's practical experience. That's what I have seen and is lauded by the truth. I believe, I that's, believe, doctor. That, that's, now, that's how, do, how do we go about you know? You, you just said something, and uh, one of the, the, the thing, skills that you need to get a job is a problem-solving skill. skill. So let's try and imbibe that culture now. We have a problem. Yes. <laughs> we have the issue of unemployment. Yes. We have people who need jobs, but they are not employable. Yes. So how yes. do we solve that problem? How do you make people become employable? Okay, fine. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, I said I'm a business coach. And part of the things we do as business coaches is to let you know how to build your business then how to also build people mm -hmm. because for your business to be successful you, you need people to run your business that's true so mentorship becomes part of what we do and one of the basic challenges on mentorship i've seen lately is impatience the zeal to make it very quick before your time mm. competition unhealthy competition mm -hmm. I've, need this um how do, which word do i use um to impress as in they always have this urge to impress people um i did an analysis recently i asked a friend who i was given lift um i we we drove together on a, a day two days before then then on the third day we were driving again i said hey guy what, what were you wearing the day before yesterday oh. he said i am trying to remember trying to remember i said you see why i asked you this is that most people borrow money 
to buy clothes, to, to wear and impress people who don't know that they exist. A lot of people are in debt today because they are trying to impress. People have this zeal to impress people who don't really know if they exist or not. Now, one of the key ways to let people understand or become employability, employable rather, is you have to first and foremost understand your goal. Hmm. You need to know, am I part and parcel of what these people want to do? Hmm. If you are not part and parcel of what an organization wants to do, leave that organization. Find where you have, you will become part and parcel of what they want to do. Two, this might sound very awful or very, people may not be, let money not be your focus. Good. Hmm. Good point. People come for money. And I always say, let value creation be your focus. Good. When you create value, money will pursue you. Exactly. Once you create value, money will chase you. Like you become, you ask yourself, what is the problem? Am I the only person here? Because nobody will want to lose a valuable staff. It doesn't matter whether you have 20 degrees or no degree. Okay. For as long as you have found valuable an organization, if you tell your organ want to leave, they'll tell you, please, uh, what can we do to have you returned? Three, key into the vision of the organization. Don't come into another person's organization and want to start your own organization. <laughs> if you want to do that, bro, sister, go out and run. It's fine, there are risks you can take to do that. But you don't come into another person's organization and want to create another, your own organization against the man's mission, vision, and whatever that he's pursuing. Objective, yes. An objective. So it is, it is important that if you want to become employable, forget what you studied in school. Mm -hmm. The country we have found ourselves is a certificate-driven economy. That um, um, workplace, that's why you see people always bring certificates. I don't look at certificates. Recently, I conducted an interview, and one of the persons I found as best is yet to get into the university. And I interacted with this person. The person I told my manager, I said, in less than five minutes, this person gave me her manifesto. She told me where she's going, what she's doing to go to that place, and how she is planning to get to that place. In less than five minutes, I hired her. You know, you know yeah. still going um, where you are. And no, then, and she, let, me just she, bought, okay. let me just butt in there. I'm going to advise. I don't know whether you have a notepad, a pen, and a paper. I think you need it. I'm taking notes. I don't know about you. Because <laughs> this is <laughs> this is Get Employed 101 class going on right here. <laughs> so please take notes because Chukum has dropped some bombshell on us this morning. He said, money should not be your focus. Make value creation your focus. When you create value, money go chase you. Like money will pursue you pretty much, right? So understand the goal of that organization. If it does not fit your goal, you mustn't be there. So please take note of those. Yes, my sister. Sorry. Right, so I going, have to make sure everybody is there. Uh, yeah, they're listening. <laughs> so what, what you were saying, I, I just want to, uh, you know, cure into it with a little story of um, a young woman that I know. She moved to the United States of America and mm -hmm. um, uh, she, the parents, the friends, a lot of people were urging her to go into nursing and all that, that there's money in it. And she, at first she actually wanted to. And she thought about it. She said, uh, nothing. I, I, it doesn't give me joy. It's not me. You know, I am not that regimented. I need something that will give me. She actually registered to start school, but did, uh, I think, one or two months. She said, no, if I go this way, I'll never go. She dumped that school, went into another university. I went to study another thing entirely. Hmm. As we speak, some people who are doing nothing in the same environment are not earning as much as she's earning. Meanwhile, she's just a social worker. Of course. You know, and she wasn't doing it for the fun, or for the, for the, for the sake of she getting money. It. No, because actually she was told if you do uh, this, money will come. If you do this other one, money will not come. She said, I don't want too much money. I just want to be happy. I just want to be in an environment I enjoy. And she went into it. But still going to where you said, how do we begin to make ourselves employable? employable. It is not what you do in the university, so to speak. I don't believe that. No, at all. It starts from the home. It mm. always starts from the home. What are you doing with your children when they are six years, eight years, ten years? What happened to voluntary service? Engage your children every holiday to learn to work. You know, there are some things you learn. You come, in, you come into an environment, you learn the job. You also learn the politics of the job. Exactly. You also learn the things, the, the things behind the job. You know, and some of these things, you may learn them by going, ah, drop this bag here for me. If it's an NTA, 
Go and bring me hard drive. Go and copy this. In your movements, those, those movements, those are always the ways you start. Assuming you're an intern, you know, 10 years, 12 years, you're not working for money, so you won't call it child labor. You're just gaining skill. Maybe you followed your mother or your father to work. My children did it. So you, you learn to do this. You see how adults interact. You see, or observe things that they do. You begin to get yourself employed. But while you're there, somebody could just ask, oh, what, what, how do I, I assess this and do this, do that? You, and somebody says, okay, well, let me check on the internet. So that child knows that with the Google uh, 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 search engine, a lot could be done. It. You Something. know, and while the child is interacting or listening, not really interacting with the adults within the working environment, certain things, new vocabularies are, are ingested, certain skills are ingested, politeness, hard working skills. They are also, those are the soft uh, skills, skills he talked about. Mm. And you see how people are able to sort themselves out in the office. Mm. You also imbibe it. But a lot of times we protect our children at the end of the day. We want them to come out from university and they get to work. Some people would have gone to school. Abuja here. Somebody went to University of Abuja. How many kilometers from here? Mm. Finished, came here to do you service. And I said, please go to Wuse Market and do it. He said, where is Wuse Market? Yeah, Are you freaking serious? <laughs> you have to, university pass through you and you pass, pass through, through university. university. That's how it's done. <laughs> In the environment, you have to study it. And you become an asset. So it's me now that will go and show you where Wuse Market is. Go back to your IT room and rest. I'd rather do the job myself. Do you understand? Mm. Wow. Where is Wuse Market, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Ask me again. <laughs> you know, someone once terrible. said that sometimes if you're given an assignment, say yes, ma, I'll go and check out the tweet later. But, but, but that, know, that, that's the key. You can find yeah, out, right? Yeah, that's the key. Always what? say yes. Say yes. Mm. And Always then say yes. Find out how to do it later. Do, or you can yes. come back and say, hey, can you please just explain that exactly. other point again? Mm -hmm. yeah, now, the, the problem of honor, mm -hmm. we can't get out of, most mm -hmm. times you get out of the university. When yes. I left university, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I happened to, to, to be someone who did the performing arts. So there's a lot of practicals uh, yeah. to go with my program. So yes. I might not be a very good example to yes. use to say, oh, yes. you got out of school, you don't know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because I was yeah. already working okay. as a student, okay. right? Good. But we see a situation where, like you just described, somebody mm -hmm. studied agricultural engineering and has mm. never seen a tractor. Yeah. Okay? It in my, describe, case, yeah. in my Com case... Computer science, who it, does not understand what computer in, is? In, in, in my mm. case, now my school has a studio, even mm. has a radio station, but mm. in my time, sure. that wasn't mm. available. Yes, yeah. So how do people, how do you bridge that gap? We can't run away from the fact that we yeah. have that challenge. Yeah. Some schools are upgrading now, especially yes. the private ones. Yes. They are bringing all these entrepreneurial skills into yeah, their curriculum, yeah. creating new mm. syllabuses for some of these courses as well. But the government schools, well, mm. <laughs> we still have a long way to go. How do you bridge that gap? Yes. Before, before I answer this, mm. uh, let me quickly uh, be on what... Um, Mr. Chukuma, uh, Chukuma said, said um, one of the ways we can actually develop these skills is I advise those who are looking for jobs mm. after we've graduated. Now, <clears throat> there are certain things an employer is looking for. Most people who are searching for job youths, they have what we call employee's mentality. Mm. What employers are looking for are employer's mentality, mentality. which is an employer with entrepreneurial mindset. Mm. If you can dis demonstrate before an employer that you have an entrepreneurial mindset, Chukuma put it all. He put it in another way. He said, money. Why did you put it? They are looking for money. They are well, mind about money. Value. Once you create value. You, their oh. minds are about what are we getting at the end of the month? You want to pay me 160000 No, sir. I, I, my, my network is 250000 How do you measure that? He's coming up with an employee's mentality. Recruitment mm. managers are looking for people with entrepreneurial mindset. Like I said, for every organization, any organization you see that put up an advert, they want to recruit people. Mm. They have problem. They have need. And they want to bring you in to solve that problem. If you demonstrate good entrepreneurial mindset that you can help them sell people, they will recruit you. You don't need to go all this rigorous interview, what did you study and all this and all that. That's how come the lady got her job and in five minutes. So change of mindset. Hmm. The employers, those who are looking for jobs, the unemployed youths, there should be a complete mindset orientation. Remove from us, I'm coming to work for this man. No, you are not working for the man, you are working for, for yourself, yourself and your family. Oh, hmm. thank you, sir. Behave as if to say you own this company and your life depends on this company. Hmm. 
company has vision and mission. Key into that mission and vision and see how you can contribute, add value, like he said, mm. add value addition to problem solving to enable this company. If the companies are producing, let's say, margarine or even granite, mm. they are looking for customers who will buy. Do you have an idea? If companies are having problem challenges on how to market their product and get them to the market, what solution can you provide? Mm. They are not looking at. They are looking at how much will come into. Yes, that's, that's not my that's job. It's the marketer's that's job. Exactly. exactly. It's not supposed to you be. Know? Thank you. It's not yes. my job. It's yes. the marketer's yes. job. Yes. Yes. Uh, take this job. file. I'm here to carry. Yes. No. Stereotypical style. We have. If you don't demonstrate an entrepreneurial mindset, acting as if to say you are the MD of the company, hmm. do you understand? No employer is looking. Is willing to recruit you. Wow. We will look for people who are willing. Mm. And then people who are also, sometimes it is difficult for us to actually get the real people. But we we'll get people who are closer and then do on the job training. Fine Those to. things that we know that the gap between the industrial demand and what is available. We try to close that down by organizing a kind of a capacity building for would be staff. Great. We try to bring you close to the realities. Just like you say, you studied theater art before, mm -hmm. you are already used to. There's a lot of people who study theater art who are not used to. Okay. Do you understand? In my first degree, I worked, I, I thought I'm going to be in the banking industry. So I did all my IT in the bank. Even when ASU was on strike for 12 months. So I was wow. still working in so the bank, started. getting all the necessary wow. work guess, experience. As was Let, on strike for 12 months. Yes, that was in 1991. It didn't start today. I lost one academic forever. section. I did too. I lost one academic session. I did. Okay, I we, we, we have to talk about strikes and <laughs> ASU in another edition of the program. <laughs> so when you really? come back to school, you realize most of the things you yeah. studied. But I was able to, that was during the issue of a micro, they call it microfinance. No, community bank or something yes, like that. Community oh. bank, yes. yes. Community bank. And I wrote up my, my, my thesis or my, this thing was actually on how to establish a micro uh, 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 wow. community bank. In the library, anyway, it doesn't exist. Where did I get that information? From the IT, from my attachment to people doing the real thing. Wow. Not the theory we're taught in the university. Not the Y, the X you learn in advanced mathematics, which you don't know how you're going to apply it in the real market. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. So the, the major thing we need to educate That's people to is like. to bridge that gap is for us to change our mindset orientation. Mm. Assume that this company is yours. Mm. And then the other thing is, I like what is happening in NYC. During the orientation, during the camp, mm -hmm. the youth are introduced to entrepreneurship. Okay. And skill How position. skills you need and all that and all that. Good. This set of people, some of them might end up starting their own small businesses. Mm -hmm. Some of them might end up also going to write application and wish to apply reading guide newspapers every day to looking for <laughs> job opportunities, going online and all that. Mm. So those people that are going online, they need also to know what employers are looking for. Another mm -hmm. thing that is that communication is very, very important. We are in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Your ability to communicate, to pass your message, express yourself very mm -hmm. well, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And you know that for a company to achieve results, you just have to communicate. Exactly. A lot of people looking for job don't know how to communicate. They lack this basic communication ability, both oral and in written form. So when you see people who cannot express themselves, you find, you find it difficult. If I send this person to go and represent us, can he actually? You cannot can even you? market yourself. How do you market our product? So bridging this gap of communication mm -hmm. is very, very important. You know what no. you were saying? Eh? Yes. I, not too long ago, I actually was having a, a conversation with was it my colleagues? Or I don't remember. It's not lawyer, probably two, three days back. Somebody told me that um, you really don't need to uh, have too much of language once you have the skills. I said, what do you mean? He said, for instance, an engineer who knows his job, whether or not he speaks English, it doesn't really matter. I said, no. Yeah. Any mm -hmm. engineer who understands his job or a medical doctor who understands his job at the same time cannot express yeah. or even it's understand probably. English, which is a second language here. Yeah. For a lot so, of people so still it's not like an oh. <laughs> <laughs> So if you cannot even understand very well and you can't speak very well, because of the 
uh, disconnects in communication, mm -hmm. there must be a mistake one way or the other. Not because you don't know it, but because the knowledge was, if you ask me to give you, what do they say? Is it uh, number six, you know, mm. or number three? In the yeah, tools, like, the no, tools. The yeah, tools. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so if you're telling me number six and it's coming out like number five, mm. we're gonna have issue, and you may not understand. So it's mm -hmm. always important for us to, you know, take that communication part, you know, very seriously. Yeah. I'm going to to touch on something because we're we are running out of time quickly. Okay. Yeah. The issue of uh, the employers being okay. a challenge in this particular setting. Okay. Because there are times when the employers are the problem. Okay. Yeah, because you, you mentioned communication, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we're going to move this conversation to some other time. But I think we'll it's important we look at that as well. Mm -hmm. But let's take a break. Let's take a break. I actually need to get water. And okay. when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Please stay with us. When there's a child out there that's not getting the same that your own child is getting, the difference will tell and there will come a time in the society where that child is going to take his pound of flesh. Where you can actually, everything from watching a, a program with the child, you can start up the conversation from something on the TV and yeah. say, oh, you know. <laughs> for, yeah, me, for me, it's like, hurry up with this business. Mm. And the other one said, and see, it's not about me, it's about the guys, they're not ready to marry. Yes. If she wants to ask something, no, I know my mother very well. <laughs> In fact, the most interesting one is when I put up pictures on WhatsApp, you know, Snapchat filters and all that, she will call me. Mm -hmm. Remove that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was a day, I got tired of all that. Welcome back. I needed to refer there. That's something you do when you're working and you want to be employable and you want to keep your employment, right? You have to refer, get training, get better at what you do. Okay. So now that we are back, before we went on that quick break, we were going to talk about the role of the employer, when we talk about employability. What role does the employer have to play specifically? Um, yeah. Okay. Let's leave let's the experts. <laughs> experts. Okay. The, 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 the role of an employer is very key. Because he is the pace setter, he is the visioner, mm -hmm. he is the driver. The, there is a popular saying in enterprise management that every organization is the lengthening shadow of one man. Hmm. Each organization is supposed to have its culture, what we call organizational culture. culture. And organizational culture are driven by the mission, the vision, and the objectives of the company. So, if you don't define this clearly mm. to your staff, if you don't set targets, mm. if you don't draw up job responsibility, mm -hmm. monitoring an effective monitoring system, and also staff handbook, or what we call employee handbook. Right. When I go to recruit for an organization, the, the first thing I do you have an employee help? We don't have. So what, what is the manual? Exactly. What is the training guide? What is right? What is like wrong? Like a Christian, we say, Bible is our manual. Everything we do. So we need to have an employee's handbook. Mm. If you don't have an employee book and you're an employer, how do you, your staff can behave in here. This one by 11 o'clock can go break because there's no streamlined break time and lunch time and all this. Mm -hmm. People can chat in the, people can even bring buns and biscuits and sell <laughs> while the sure. work is going on. <laughs> Because you don't have organizational culture, mm. you don't have work ethics, your staff don't understand the vision and mission. This is where employers are making that mistake. So we must have to develop an, a culture for your organization, let your staff understand the do's and don'ts, and where possible, where possible, do it. Do staff meeting every week. Discuss with your staff, with your line managers, with your line supervisors, mm. have regular meeting with them so that we know that everybody is on track. As soon as you lose focus, 
it will affect the organization mm. directly or indirectly. So this is where and the the employers must be able to set up, be a pay setter, organize yourself, organize the office, have rules, have what we call SOP standard operation it's procedure in this organization. Mm. Let everybody understand where we are going, do's and don'ts. And if you do that, you raise a very good workspace and then um, very good staff that people are. And, and this is really important because we also realize that all the uh, qualifications that you enlisted earlier while we're having this conversation about why uh, you need to have these skills if you want to be employable. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. people get these skills. They get into an organization that's lax, that does not have any form of structure, and they lose it. Thank you. They just gel into what is there. So it's important that the organization also creates a space for people to be employable. Yeah, there's something Oga said, and um, I also want to push for it, push it more. You have to define, have a self-defined goal mm -hmm. when you find yourself in any organization. Mm -hmm. If you have self-defined goal, no matter how the organization is, it will not affect your person. I, when I started my career way back, I told them that I am not working for the organization, that I'm, I'm working, working for with. myself. Okay. Nobody understood that. Then in our industry, um, most of my mates then would know. I was one of the hottest because everybody was looking for me. What was I doing? I was always looking f for myself. And what's that? I read books. Uh, Zig Ziglar at a point became my favorite friend. <laughs> I don't know Zig Ziglar, but I could say a lot of quotes from Zig Ziglar. Yeah, he's a and quote because, master. Yes, because of more of, 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 uh, we were focused more on marketing. I had Brent Tracy. I had lots of Brent Tracy's books. Michael. And yes, anyone, and, and um, Michael, um, I remember the other one. Marco. Marco. Mm -hmm. I remember, uh, there's this other one. There's this Eat the Frog. Oh. oh. I used, that's Brent Tracy. Yes, yes. I used that book to kill my procrastination spirit. Hmm, Any area I saw myself lacking, I wasn't Eat waiting for frog. the organization to help, my, help me become what, because I knew I was building myself. And I did mention to my colleagues that I said, no matter what we are giving to this organization, as far as I said, I said the reward might not come from this organization. Yeah. So if we're looking for this organization to give us this reward, they might not. But the truth is, when you give your best, your best will announce you outside. So do While the organization you. is wasting time, someone else will come and pick you. And you go there, and, and that was how it happened to me. I kept moving, jumping steps. And you know, in marketing, if you're doing well, they will always employ you. Of course. Most people don't do this. Rather, when they get into an organization, they allow the relaxed pattern of the Nigerian, I'll call it the Nigerian pattern, Just. of the organization to eat them up. No, it shouldn't be. Focus, have a self-defined goal. Have your plan. Have where you're going. If the organization is not giving you what you want, don't say because, because in most cases, some organizations might, be, might, might have it in mind to give, but the resources might not be there. Yeah. And instead of cutting down on staff strength, they would maybe look at some areas that would have affected the staff mm. and shut down on that. They could say, okay, let's forget about training and focus on our internal in-house training. Some people will just hear that their colleagues went on training mm -hmm. and they come back and begin to misbehave. And they've not asked themselves, how many staff strength do, do they have in that organization? Mm -hmm. So you could look, don't allow the happenings of the organization to affect you. Bring in your best, focus on your focus, develop yourself, make yourself sellable. And there are a lot of free trainings that you can access online. Oh, no, YouTube, yes. YouTube has, YouTube has YouTube made YouTube varsity. Uh, you know, you know what, you were, what we were talking about? I remember some time ago I was uh, actually doing uh, online on the university, uh, YouTube varsity uh, stuff. <laughs> the, the man there told us about personal branding and corporate branding mm. and your personal branding should not be uh, you know should not overtake that of a corporate, corporate but then yeah. should not completely be submerged because that's actually what makes you who you are of course if your brand your brand is to be honest hardworking, punctual and all that and your organization is not um, people are always coming late a lot of people are dishonest don't let those people affect you. Mm -hmm. If a corporate brand too, it's uh, you know somewhat up there too, and your own is here. Work towards meeting up, so that way you're selling yourself and also selling the company at the same time. It's very important. But without um, uh, cutting you short again, when you asked about what the role of the organization the or employers mm -hmm. are, 
I, a lot of times, we have this um, divide and rule kind of setup in some organizations, mm. and it's not good. An employer has 20 people, 30 people under you, and there is a line of command. Then you want to deal with somebody because maybe you feel, for personal reasons, you trust the person down the line. In decisions, um, discussions that are meant to be with your direct lieutenant, you skip them and go to the lower, background, lower person. At the end of it, what you do is to make these other people angry. Eventually, they will not be able to bring out their best. But again, that's when your personal brand actually comes to pay. Be focused. And like he will say, focus on your focus. <laughs> focus on your yeah, focus. It's, important, no, it's important to focus on your focus. And um, I always say, if you focus on your focus, you will soon become the focus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people focus on you. But mm -hmm. see... Mr. Chukuma is rhyming. Eh? <laughs> focus on your focus and you, you will become, become the, the focus. focus. Because okay. people will focus on you, on you as the focus. Of course. Oh. But see, um, much as we are talking about corporate organization, established organization, one, one key area I would also want Oka to speak more on is the SMEs. Now, if you know the, if you go by the number of the rate of unemployment in the country today, mm. we see that if there is a system in place that could support the SMEs, most of the unemployment that we cry mm. about today will be reduced, because most people can't keep saying government should create employment. Government should. Government cannot employ every unemployed Nigerian, but government could create a system where people like Rita can employ fifteen. Lease employs 20, or guy employs 25, I employ 10. Before you know it, we are taking people off the system. Why is but, my own bigger than her own? Uh, you know, now, no, I, 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 but I took the list. Don't worry. But I, I, took, I took the list. I now, one thing I'm trying to say in essence is that the role of government should have been to make the environment so good for people to be able to employ people. Mm -hmm. Now, by so doing, SMEs. Mm -hmm. We've talked about a lot of programs in Nigeria, about SMEs, 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 yet there are counter programs that are killing these SMEs. So when you... What do you mean? I don't want to go there. Now, a government comes up with a, a pro program of support for SME. Another arm of the government comes up with another tax that is choking the SME. You have no reason, and they are choking you with tax. Okay. So they give with one hand and then they take it with another. And regulations are too. Recently, recently I had cause to talk about um, uh, the what's it called now? It's not Shopee. What's <coughs> the the end power program that the government have where they pay uh, people uh, thirty thousand? Is it thirty thousand naira yeah. stipend per month? Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand naira per month. It's supposed to be for a period yeah. of how long? I think two years, two years. or so. Yeah. And when it ends, these people start complaining. Of yeah. course. So I'm wondering, what was the primary objective of this scheme? 30,000 naira for two years to do what? No, to no, become no, what it was, eventually? It was, it was very was there clear. a plan for no, them? it was clearly stated. Yeah. This money is for you to invest. You it's, know. it's possible to... I can mention one critical thing. It's possible to give these people money for like 10, 20, 30 years. It will turn out to like civil servants who work the whole of their life. Some civil servants. Yeah, or some civil servants. Mm. Who work the whole of their life. Because I know there are some who are really efficient. And upon retirement, they will still complain that government didn't treat them well. Meanwhile, during that time of your work, you are working, you are earning your salaries, and when you receive the little stipends they give at the end of your retirement, you will still complain that government didn't treat you well. But every time someone earns an income, I always use the Bible because I'm a believer of the Bible. There is a portion of the Bible that says that he that gives seeds also gave, gave bread. He gave seed to the sower mm. and bread to the eater. For every couple you have received, there is a seed element of it and there is the bread element of it. But you see that people use their two hands. We bread it all. Bread it all and equally look for another person's own to bread to all. Bread. And yet they still wait to have something to show forth, where would that something come from? It they doesn't matter. No, they they are believing God. If, it doesn't matter. See, I tell people, if you can't save when you have 10 naira, you will not be able to save when you have 10 million. Hmm. Savings is not a function of how much you have. It's exactly. a function of the and character. And something you start from day it's one, you start mindset. working. Tell yourself, if you're earning 20,000 um, as a starter, you should be able to save at least 2,000 or 4,000. 
every month from there. When it increases, you also increase that saving. That way, you make so more you money. make you only you make know, a, yeah, a percentage you, thing, course, right? Yeah, it's a percentage thing. That's how it's done. Some people will tell you that they are waiting when the money is bigger. The minute the money is bigger, the problem is also bigger. But without losing focus, we're still talking about employability. <laughs> yes, we, we are still talking about employability. <laughs> exactly. And I, no. uh, Mr. Chooks mentioned something about SMEs. You see, um, 2017, 2018, Smidan is an agency of uh, government, mm. Prasat under the Ministry of, Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment. They did a research, I think in collaboration with MBS, uh, National Bureau of Statistics, and they discovered that there are about, uh, I think, about 54 million SMEs. I didn't hear you. Sorry. 54, 54 million, million SMEs. SMEs. Wow. And, no, 47 million SMEs. 47 million SMEs. And they discovered that an average SME is employed at least two persons. Of course. So it simply means that the more SMEs we have, the more jobs we are created. And there are those not counted, though. that Thank number. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They also rated it state by state, state with the highest SME, state with the lowest SMEs, and now that about 36 states, including um, the FCT. FCT. So what I'm trying to say here is that I agree with you. The, the more SMEs you have, the more jobs were created. Mm. Now, federal government early this no late last year, through the central bank, and then the bankers committee. They came up with what they call EGMIS program. Mm. EGMIS is an agricultural small and medium and scale, scale investment scheme. scheme. Okay. This is it encourages SME to assess between one to ten million naira. Right. In a seven year duration, nine percent interest, five percent actually. Per annum. But per annum, yeah. With one year moratorium. Oh. If you are a startup, you can assess Not up to five easy. million. Not bad. If you are a startup. If you are expanding, if you are get looking for this money to expand, you can assess up to 10 million. And they structured it in so that before you assess this money, you need to undergo at least a one week training. Okay. They call it entrepreneurial development training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They point, appointed some organizations. You see, my organizations happen to be one of the, we train people who want to assess this loan. And in the course of training these people, at this, we discover that, hey, most of these SMEs that are coming for this money are not actually bring, getting this money to do what they say they want to use it for. They will get it and Fraud. buy a car. Thank you. Fraud. Some want to use it to buy a car, to change their car. Some want to use it and take a chief and state title. Some, Some want to change, use it change to relocate okay. to Canada. So, thank you. No. Yes. You because want. how do I know of this? Course. You know it by the questions they ask during the training. Mm. And... Um, a national microfinance bank called NISA Microfinance, who is the special purpose vehicle set up by CBN to manage this, they, they specified, they give specifications. It's not all business. If you are getting this money for buying and selling, it's not allowed because you will not create jobs. They listed some sectors that are job that have the capacity to create jobs. Job. Do you understand? Mm. But what I discovered, I'm just trying to paint big, beautiful pictures that government have in place right. for SMEs. Right. But implementation is problem. I tell you, in my organization, we've trained over 1,000. So it, it, it's good to, to know that the, money, the government is aware enough to yes. get people like you yes. to detect yes. the real people yes. and those who are in trade. Yes. Hopefully we keep that up. Yes. So in, 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 in doing that, we discover also that the implementation of government policies is one of the greatest problems facing this country. And it's creating this unemployment. Hmm. Do you understand? The empower you people mention, my younger sister, much, much younger sister, benefited in this. After her, she had an NC or something like that, say, and he was going to do B.Ed. and later on was married and then started to get children before she proceeded. But when empower came, he had the opportunity of uh, teaching. Mm. And after that, when they stopped them, with the experience she had gathered, she got a job. Can and that is it? exactly that's how, how it should be. She was able that's, to get a job that's how it should be. In, in a private, well-organized private secondary school. She's now what? teaching. Wonderful. Do you understand? Wonderful. And the first of the experience I got when you were doing the Empower and all this, 
she is almost going to an assistant uh, head. What, what, what and is that is because she applied Why? herself in that Be two years. Exactly. Which brings us to where we started. The fact that you need these soft skills. Yes. You, something will get you through the Good. door Thank into you. that employment. Yes. You need to stay there, there. Yeah. if you have the skills. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about you. I have not from today's program. It's only you. I have my own notes too. If you didn't... Good luck. Hopefully, our producer will be kind enough to repeat the program. But thank you for having this conversation with us today. We hope you're better equipped to get employed and stay employed. My name is Rita Egujewik. Big thank you to Chukuba, Liz, and Dr. Daniel. That's us for you today. See you next time. Adios. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.